The Turco Interchange is a three-level four-way freeway interchange within the city of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Located southwest of downtown, the interchange links auto routes 15 and 20, and route 136, and provides access to the Champlain Bridge via the Dakery South Expressway. It takes its name from the nearby Philippe Turco Street and Turco Village, which were in turn named after Philippe Turco who was a merchant owning land in saint Henri. Turco is the largest interchange in the province and the third busiest interchange of Montreal as of 2010. With numbers averaging a north-south bound flow of 278,000 approximate daily drivers, and over 350,000 west-eastbound in total. Moreover, Turco is an occasional spot for road accidents, as speed is limited to only 70 km per hour on any of the interchange's directions, and the limit is often disregarded by the night drivers going over 100 km per hour. The interchange underwent an extensive reconstruction commencing in 2015 which was completed by fall 2020. The $3. 7 billion project is the largest road work in the province's history. The interchange was projected as part of the first Montreal Highway in 1958 and planned to bind it to the Dakery Expressway, which was also designed at the same time. Construction started in October 1965 and Turco was built in time for the 1967 Montreal Expo, along with other big projects such as the Montreal Metro. Upon its erection, an old railroad yard belonging to the Grand Trunk Company served as location for the interchange and was shortened by 25%, which required the demolition of a roundhouse. In 1969, upon reviewing the situation, city authorities concluded that the project used unnecessary space and could have coexisted perfectly alongside the buildings that were otherwise demolished, including some 20 residences. The elevated lanes of the Turco interchange when it was originally constructed, nearly the entire interchange was built high above the ground. Because of the cliff existing between the upper Lachine domain and the Turco sorting yard overtaking the old Saint-Pierre Lake Basin. The highest point of the interchange is located in its southern part over the Lachine Canal to allow for the passing of ships, but the canal closed its waterway operations just three years later, in 1970. The mean height of the interchange is around 40 meters, which was, at the time of its inauguration, both the highest freeway interchange in all of Canada and a dramatic demonstration of Montreal's status as a modern global metropolis at the time. The construction of the junction was said to be rushed during the 1960s boom, with a lack of drainage and permeable concrete, and deteriorated, with pieces of concrete slabs falling from overpass structures. In 2000, more than 300,000 vehicles used the interchange every day, far more than the 50,000 to 60,000 vehicles that it had been designed to carry. Since 2010, the interchange became subject to major repairs of the most heavily accessed ramps. During the summer of 2011, over 2. 7 kilometers worth of lanes were restored, repaved, and returned to safely accessible condition for larger vehicles. Underside of the various overpasses comprising the Turco interchange. In June 2007, the Quebec government announced the demolition and reconstruction of the structure, which was projected to be complete in 2016. The announcement came four years after a study on the interchange showed the Turco structure was crumbling, with reports of concrete slabs up to one square meter falling from the overpasses. In addition to a new interchange built lower to the ground, a large segment of Auto Route 20 would be rebuilt more to the north. Reconstruction of the interchange is expected to cost between $1. 2 billion and 1 dollar. 5 billion. At the time of its announcement, the project created controversy as to how Turco should be rebuilt. Local residents and community groups have come out against the project as proposed by the government, claiming that it will worsen pollution, increase automobile traffic downtown, and require the demolition of housing including a significant portion of the village de Tanneries neighborhood. The project's environmental hearings ended on June 19, 2009. They revealed new plans for the area by CN, as well as strong public desire to protect existing communities, rethink the modal balance of Montreal's urban transportation, and plan realistically for a future of energy shortages and environmental crisis. After MIP conducted several environmental and technical impact investigations in early summer of 2009, construction plans were halted because of the 2009 financial crisis. In April 2010, the City of Montreal gathered all previous commentary reviewed by BAPE and announced a different reconstruction project in which the railroad tracks and the main body of the A20 are kept at their original location. 
the height of the interchange is maintained but replaced with better lasting materials, and the former Turco yard serve as ground for a new urban redevelopment district with its own community aspect. The cost is set at least $5 billion, which is at least three times that of the original. If this project is to replace the original, stated Julie Boulay, we can expect at least two more years of stalling, and suggested that Turco should not be seen as a sandbox for any kind of proposals coming from all levels of the government. According to Gerald Tremblay, former mayor of Montreal, that was exactly the time necessary to prepare for the works, which were postponed into the second half of 2012. Starting February 2012, the MTQ proceeded to hire excavation companies in order to start the ground leveling of the former yards in terms of the future project. The westbound lanes of the A20 were to be moved to that location, and Boulay confirmed that the reconfiguration of the suite into Bellevue, Pullman, Angrignan interchange would take place and that it was scheduled to be completed in 2018. Just as foreseen in the project, the part of the Angrignan Boulevard used as an exit overpass from the A20 will be moved some 300 meters westward, forming the second half of the Seine and de Bellevue Boulevard intersection. The original part of Pullman Street, between Angrignan and saint Anne simply ceased to exist. As of April 2014, the works could be seen to be underway near the interchange itself, and some existing street-slash-exit-slash-entrances. Cote Saint-Paul, Angrignan-slash-Pullman, had been reconfigured to accept the new flow once the body of the A20 was moved northward. The reconfiguration and reconstruction of the interchange commenced in 2015 and was completed by fall 2020. In October 2016, much of the old interchange was closed to allow continuous work. The $3.7 7 billion project was the largest roadwork in the province's history. Famous Quebec folk singer Plume La Traverse, beacon of the late 1960s counterculture and key figure at the 1976 Montreal Olympics, compared Turco to the functional heart of the city. With its inward ramps being the arteries and outward ramps being the veins in the lyrics of one of his late 1970s songs. Turco was the setting for writer-director René Bailser's 1978 short film Turco Interchange, a dark rom-com. Since late 1990s, the abandoned space underneath the ramps has become a place of urban gatherings for certain graffiti artists. The artistic trio flow, which was also rooted in Montreal in 1993 and has long ever since moved on, is involved in producing one of the paintings on the westbound A20 ramp, smashing all toys. With criminal activity on the rise in saint Henri in the first half of the 2000s, this space has also been high on drug dealers and violence gangs until they were cleared by the SPVM by 2010. Thanks for watching.